In 1880, there were about 200 Fisher families here in the Ladyhead area, which is, uh, includes this part of the town and runs up to um, the old uh, St. Mary on the Rock. And there was a d debate as to why it's called Ladyhead, but it's probably related to the old religious house of St. Mary on the Rock, which uh, was inhabited by Caldy monks. That was the natural way for the fisher folk to get down to the harbour, past those ruins. But this corner, the edge between the cathedral precincts and, and the cliff, had been known as the Lady Head for quite a long time. Um, by the turn of the century, there was quite a lot of pressure on that community. It was uh, understood in the town by many that the social conditions of the fisher folk were contributing to their um, poor health and they had a very hard way of life with going to sea and the women of the fisher folk walking out to the estuary at Guard Bridge in order to um, gather mussels for bait for the lines. But the very tough way of life was something that uh, caught the imagination of the founders of this church because they noticed that the fisher folk didn't have a church that they could attend. They couldn't afford the pew rents. All the churches in the town charged a rent for a seat in the church, and they probably didn't feel that welcome either. There is some evidence of that uh, from the Mother Church of All Saints, St Andrew's Church, and noticing that the church was too full, and that not everyone could fit in, and that uh, under the inspiration of people like Thomas Truman Oliphant, um, and quite possibly the Youngers as well, not long afterwards, they uh, started to debate what they should do, whether they, sh they should found a daughter church, a mission church, in this part of the town for the fisher folk, or whether they should increase the size of St Andrew's Church, or the third option, whether they should do nothing. And the congregation took a vote, and they chose the third option, to do nothing. But despite that, the rector of St Andrew's persuaded the vestry to pursue the program that has led to All Saints, with the foundation of a, first, uh, a tin church, and then partly stone, and then fully stone. Uh, and the consecration in 1923 drew back that former incumbent of St Andrew's Church, and he was involved in the consecration of this church, in that he had the courage and determination to push it through. It was a very generous bequest which enabled those things to happen, but also um, quite possibly um, the benefaction of a woman who had her own money, married another very wealthy man, but had her own money, and acted with great independence on forming this church. I think, I think that sort of energy, determination for founding this church was of such generosity and imagination, but it's also, it's also contemporaneous with the suffragettes. And so I think a, a very established family with uh, well-recorded philanthropic activity, but a particular feeling for this community and this place. It copied the missions in the slum areas of many of cities and towns of the UK, in that um, more established clergy were not willing to go into places like that. I'm not sure that was the case here, but she copied that pattern of great generosity to a needy part of the community, but also bringing the colour, the vitality, uh, the, the sensual side of worship that was being rediscovered and reasserted at that stage through the Tractarian and Anglo-Catholic revival. And we still have that going strong here. The mission has changed significantly with the decline of the fishing industry locally and the fishing community. We have only two lobster boats now um, 
based at St Andrews. Uh, so the mission has changed drastically in that the local people are predominantly uh, students and visitors, tourists in the summer, with some uh, people who live locally, fortunate enough to live locally in um, a housing market which is extremely expensive and quite difficult to maintain. So um, our mission has naturally changed and we are much more gathered than we once were as a congregation in that people come in from Dundee, from uh, south of the Nuke, sometimes even as far as Glasgow, uh, in order to worship in a community that they love. But I do think the, the continuous thing is that we are worshipping in a way which we feel is resonant with those who have gone before. So we're seeking a continuity not only with the first, first worshippers here, we frequently remember, but also um, Christians through the ages. So we have this funny situation of being the closest church to the cathedral ruins, and we are the church in the town that probably uses a liturgy which is most similar, not saying that similar, but most similar to the worship of St. Andrew's Cathedral before its destruction. So the use of Gregorian chant, the use of ceremony of incense, of bells, uh, all those things are quite like what would have happened there. So people have a sense of connection with the past. And that connection with the past is just not a romantic thing, or a liking for history, a liking for um, the aesthetic side of things. But we seek to see through those sensual things the God who creates, the God who becomes incarnate in Jesus Christ, and who seeks to express his love to a world which is just as needy, uh, but in different ways now. Students have become a much bigger part of the church in um, generations since the war. Our relationship with St Mary's College within the university is a very fruitful one, and a number of staff are members of our community. But uh, in recent years, the undergraduate number has increased. They seem to enjoy a community which is welcoming and which is very permeable. Um, they can get involved with leadership, with governance, um, quite easily. And we seek to provide a base for them which is out with the university and its ethos, which is an admirable ethos in so many ways, as our newspapers have recently underlined, but is very different from a Christian ethos. Uh, so we try to provide a safe and trustworthy place where people can be themselves and find the other half of their life beyond their academic endeavour. And here they relate to people who might be their teachers, might be their colleagues, might be their students, might be people who've never been to university, uh, might be cleaners in the university, and they relate together as equals. And that is something which remarkably works without very much friction at all and is appreciated by everyone. Uh, why? I think there is a clarity about uh, the Christian fellowship and it's one of those instances where um, I have sometimes said, water is thicker than blood. The water of baptism is, is something which overrides anything else, certainly overrides social class which in Scotland is far less important than other, some other parts of the UK anyway. Visitors play a significant role in the congregation and we talk about the All Saints diaspora. These are largely people who want to stay in touch and so we keep in touch by email and through social media through the year anyway. The centenary is primarily a time to uh, recommit and um, it's not accidental, I suppose, that it begins with our dedication festival, which celebrates the dedication of the building, but also is an opportunity for us to rededicate ourselves to Christian service, to the worship of, of God in this place, but also to his service in our daily lives. Uh, and throughout my time here, I would always encourage people to do that, to examine their, themselves and uh, to reflect and pray about their spiritual lives and the impact of their spiritual lives on um, their life in the world, in this community or wherever they live. 
uh, so that there is a definite connection. Uh, because what we think and what we pray sits behind what we do. It has a real effect. It begins with ideas, ideas that we hope are undergirded by our faith, by the, the teachings of scripture and the teachings of the church through the centuries, but that we are also mindful of the ideas uh, that are being thought up day by day by people all over the world in our time, new ways of looking at things. And some of those will be very helpful, some of them will not. And we need the wisdom that our faith provides and that the Christian community provides in order to sift what is good from what is not so good. And so that we approach life um, in a resourced way, not only for ourselves, but for those amongst whom we live, so that we can spread the good news of, a gospel, of the gospel in a way that brings life, that brings clarity, so that we are lights in the world.